hello and uh, so glad to have you uh, tuning in to today's uh, lesson, to today's conversation and little little jaunt in uh, the Word of God and especially as we turn to the Word of God to seek to glean uh, clarity, understanding, but certainly fuel for our faith to further our relationship with Jesus. And that's really what we're after, not to not to uh, just fill our heads with all the right answers to all the questions. Uh, certainly we do get answers to questions, but even more than that, we're able to draw near to the heart of God through Jesus, and then we are able to be bearers of the heart of God into uh, our neighbors' lives and to the nations as we testify to the goodness of the gospel. And uh, we're in the book of Acts. Uh, we're looking at chapter 2, and we're going to pick up in verse 5 in, in this lesson this morning. So let's pray. Let's ask the Word to lead and guide us and teach us and ready our hearts to receive His Word. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we take this time to pause, to be still before You, to hear and seek your voice. Lord, also to have you heal the brokenness of our heart, to make straight and clear the, the dividedness in our thinking. And, O oh Lord, for you to bring into singularity uh, who we are on the inside with how we live on the outside, that, that truly the way we live would reflect uh, the, the deepest desires and convictions of our heart as we love you. So God, as you tell us to, to uh, in the greatest commandment, to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, enable us to do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Acts chapter 2, and we've looked at verses 1 through 4 of chapter 2 already, and and we looked at the coming of the Holy Spirit as there was this uh, sound and sight and speech. And now uh, we get a little bit more uh, information, a little bit more clarity about what's really going on here in this moment in time at Pentecost and how it's connected to the larger realities that God has been doing in human history. So let's uh, hear the word. In, in verse uh, 5, it says, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews who were devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them in our own tongues declaring the mighty works of God. So a little, little kind of envision this, if you will, with me. So the disciples are, as Jesus told them, to stay and wait and they will receive. And so they're hanging out in Jerusalem. In this case, they're in the upper room. And as they're in the upper room, uh, the, the spirit comes upon them and and this kind of continues, and they, they move out, and, and there is such a sound, and there is such a sight, that it actually draws attention to them. The Holy Spirit draws attention to what he's doing so much so that people notice this, and as the, the, the new, uh, these disciples that are newly baptized in the Spirit become witnesses. Immediately, they become witnesses, and they become uh, actually unintentional witnesses because the, the Spirit is moving so powerfully in and on and through them. And so uh, this, this sight uh, draws the, the curiosity of those who were scattered. It says this, uh, that there were devout men from every nation under heaven. There were those that were uh, Jews or followers of uh, the, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who had gathered 
and had been visiting Jerusalem. And so they were from all the, the, the known regions uh, not far from Israel. And so they were scattered. And, and what's interesting about that scattering is the scattering was partly brought about by the uh, various conquerings that have happened throughout the Old Testament. Uh, certainly, as we get into the, the later uh, stages of, of Old Testament history with uh, the work of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians and, and uh, into the intertestamental time. And, and so Jews had been scattered all about. Now, the great scattering, though, and this is what I think is so significant about Pentecost, is that it says, uh, at the sound of the multitude came together, they were bewildered because it says, each one, at the end of verse 6, each one was hearing them speak in his own language. Language is something that God created, and it's something as a means of communication that has existed among humanity, but the diversity of language is also a result of a work of God. You'd have to go back with me to Genesis chapter 11 when it says that, uh, verse 1, it says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people uh, migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and set, settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we become dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And it says in verse 5, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language. And there is, oh, this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will be now be impossible for them. So come, let us go down there and confuse their languages so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left, building, left off building the city. So humanity, fallen humanity, had come together, and in defiance and in rebellion and in, in, in assertion against God, were seeking to make a name for themselves and, and to establish humanity as a, a, a great uh, entity in creation and thereby be united with one another and against God. And they had one language. And so God, to, to thwart this mutation and this manifestation of their re rebelliousness and their wickedness, it would not have been good for them in the end to come together and uh, so assert themselves against God. And so it's an act of God's grace to scatter them so that he doesn't obliterate and destroy them. But in scattering them, he diversified language over the earth. And so here we have in uh, Acts chapter 2, the multiplicity of languages by which the Holy Spirit is declaring the glory and the greatness of God, the works of God. As we see at the end of verse 11, uh, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And so there was this scattering and a diversity of language. And now as the Holy Spirit has come and moves, the Holy Spirit is now an in-gatherer to gather back to God's self through faith in Jesus Christ, those who were scattered. And so in the gathering, the unity will be centered in faith and by faith in Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit moves in such a way to gather. And as the Holy Spirit moves to gather, the Holy Spirit also speaks. Notice that this is not just the stirring of heart. This is not just the movement of bodies to physically come together, but there is a declaring of the mighty work of God and the works of God. And these, these works and this work is the redemption that has been accomplished and is now offered to all who believe in Jesus. This is what's so incredible about Pentecost because you have uh, Jesus uh, who suffers and dies on the cross that in a sense, breaks the power of the curse of sin. And you have the Holy Spirit who comes to gather those who had been scattered, to make uh, of all the diversity of people one people in Christ. And so we have in, in Jesus and the Holy Spirit the beginning of the remaking and the redeeming of creation. 
We have God in history fixing everything we have broken. And in, in our day, we have all these, uh, these divided realities when it comes to uh, race, politics, economics, um, uh, situations that are going on in the world and the different perspectives we have on immigration and climate change. And we have all these things that continue to further evidence the division that exists in us. And there is no politician, there is no political party, there is no economic plan, there is no nominee to the Supreme Court, there is no human initiative that will finally and fully resolve and gather back again all that has been scattered and divided by God. Only God can do that. And that is why Jesus he comes and he says, no one comes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus comes as the only redeemer between God and humanity. As God scattered and divided because of human, humanity's sin, our sin, so God in Christ gathers and will once again unify. And that's why in the early church, that's why in the writings of the early church with the Apostle Paul and Peter and so forth, they talk about the importance of the unity of the church, that we are one body, united in Christ, where there is no longer, uh, he, when, when Paul says there's no longer Jew nor Greek, uh, male nor female, slave nor free, he's not saying those designations don't exist anymore. He's saying that the importance that we place upon those designations to, to divide no longer matter because we are now united across Jew and Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. We are united over these lines. We become one in Christ. And this is the, this is the unity that Jesus Christ wins and accomplishes. This is the unity that the Holy Spirit works and accomplishes in the church. And there is no unity. There is no gathering. There is no togetherness, togetherness with one another if we aren't first united and together with God by faith in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why trusting Jesus is the only hope, the only way, the only life, for he's the only Savior. Let's pray. God, you are uh, holy and great, and you are right to do with us as you please. Not only because you are the potter and we are the clay, but also because we are made in your image and we have rejected you as our creator and as our Lord. And we, in such deep and uh, widespread and incendiary ways, flaunt ourself against you. And as a result, humanity is in a constant state of brokenness. We see this in our own homes, our own neighborhoods, our own places of work. We see this in our own communities and in our own nation and around the world. We turn on the news or we scroll through it in, in, in our feed on our phone and we see evidences over and over and over again of brokenness. And that brokenness is because we have been scattered and divided as an act of your mercy that you not destroy us so that you can send forth your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. And now only and by faith in him and his work are we invited to be regathered and to be remade as one people in Christ. God Help us to hear that message. Help us to heed that message. Help us to embrace this message. Help us, O oh God, to be those through whom this life pulsates for your glory and for the good and for the spread of the gospel among our neighbors and the nations. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much again for being with me this morning and in this lesson as we're working our way through Acts. There is so much, I mean, everywhere, I shouldn't say this, uniquely to Acts. It's everywhere in Scripture if we take the time to, to pause and think and pray and, and seek the Lord on insight. But especially in Acts, so much powerful and insightful, applicable things we are going to learn, but I think also things that are going to uh, change our life as we embrace them and we encounter the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and be with you today. I'll see you again tomorrow.